people have this, but we can just execute a little bit better. What have you liked and uh, what would you prefer to see, would you say? Okay, um, I would love to see another Akali. Initially, because I did not expect um, Akali to perform that well in game number two. We didn't, well, not much Akali plays were seen, given that there were a handful of nerfs on this champion. But seeing that in Wiki Sports code pulled this off, I want to see more of that. On top of that point, I also like to say that in Wake Esports, they do this kind of chess game in the jabs. Yes, they do have their own blockings and their own pickups, but it doesn't really punish them that much. It punishes their opponents instead. Yeah, for sure. I mean, going back into this one, uh, if we see their colleagues, sure, by all means, I think that's a fine one. Uh, Cat type showed a good performance on that. Uh, it wasn't quite enough to impress Oval, but that's okay. I still think that it's a viable option for Invade Esports. A little bit less useful uh, after already being seen once. Sangon Phantom, though, they are the ones that have to try and respond to some of the other threats. Cold and Feed and What the Jets have been in huge initiators. At some point, you have to ask yourself, do I want to ban the Rakan? And there you go. Yes. Get rid of the Rakan, because that's way too much of a problem to deal with. And that, I'm actually curious. If ever Invade Esports to win this 3-0, will Omo be finally satisfied? Or is it still going to be a no? Yeah, I doubt it. Then. <laughs> Tiger Phantom Bell locking in that twisted fate. You know, Belby, you were a headache on this champion. We're gonna get this for ourselves. Starting off with the twisted fate. Yeah, so once again, they're just gonna look to try and open up, especially once you've taken away the Zig. Hmm. Not a number of options available. Uh, kind of restricted, right? We saw Galio as an option. Uh, I know Skippy's mm -hmm. a big fan of the Pantheon. Uh, those are a couple of choices that you could grab when you see the twisted the fate on the enemy team. But the alternative is you just grab a bunch of power picks, get the brand, you get the Kaiser. That's as strong as a bottling duo as you want, and the brand can kind of flex as well. <gasps> Akshan, however, but you also have the Kha'Zix locking. in. I was about to say, Saigon Phantom, I want to see them. You pick up the Pantheon, pick up the Galio, just to get those globals and semi-global ults in their draft. But in with esports, they want the hooks. They got fire. Yeah. Uncharacteristic for what the Jets to play for a mage style uh, support. He's here to be this year. He's here to bring you around the map, lead you by the nose, and play to his own tune. You know, he's the Pied Piper of Wild Rift, and uh, Thrash fits so much better into that place now than Brand does. So, going for this is a good choice, if you ask me. Uh, doesn't gain so much from having held for the last pick anyway. That being said, Riven coming in here. Yeah, now we're looking Now we're looking at some action uh, in, the, in the Baron lane. And to add to that, that sentence will definitely mean your death. Imagine a stun coming out from Riven right after you got hooked, or maybe one IK ten raid. Whoever what the Jess gets will most definitely be a secure kill for Invit Esports. Another good um, initiator or champion that has good CC is Leona. Leona is an interesting choice. Gives them some good crowd control, which they desperately need. Oh. Unfortunately, I think that this does mean they can only really go for fights that involve them peeling back to front. I don't think that they want to commit too hard. The Akali is interesting as well because it gives them a, some form of a flank angle and it adds a secondary threat to the Kha'Zix. But it really does feel like Second Phantoms so are just kind of playing on tilt a little bit. Uh, it definitely does well if you get a little bit ahead. But it's going to be so difficult. I feel like they're not playing to their strengths and giving Invade Esports the tempo instead. That's true. Um, they are just basically dancing to the music that invade esports. And I have to say, with this Jaff, they will definitely go all in. In your face type of composition. I'm actually a bit worried for this Akshan and this Twisted Fate. Yeah, a lot of threats coming into Saigon Phantom invade esports. Just seem like they have a couple. Great, not because of the quality of the games we've seen so far, but because of the quality of the game I hope we're about to see. We've got some spicy drafts. I know you want to talk about this, TJ. I see you jumping up and down. Let's get right into it. What do you want to talk about? Well, I mean, let's just start with the Saigon Phantom side of things, where they've decided okay. to, like, take pick comp and make it a pick comp that rules. Because they've got backline crit damage in the arc shot to take those front to back team fights. As we get into game, you also have to talk about the Akali Kazik dive duo yep. behind the Twisted Fate Leona CC. Everything about this draft is exciting to me on both sides, but we can start there. I think what's exciting to me is that Saigon Fan past that point. Uh, we've come full circle. I think I find myself, I'm going to start calming down. You know, we're going to focus on the okay. game state as Cold right. and Feet is going to look for a 1v1. Sure, walking forward here oh, as no. Tony finds a gold card. This is a dangerous early game, Omo. As the Leona wanders up the river and Connor's going to flank around the side, but AOHK is already dead. This is actually super dangerous. Cold and Feet will back away. First blood to invade. 
Good start from them. I'm, I was kind of surprised it went their way after Belby did a little bit of a face check into Gold Cart plus Cosmic combo there. Like I said, right, I feel like Invade have not been playing their best game today. And honestly, I can't really blame them as well. Uh, it's pretty late in the night for most of these players. And I know we joke about gamer hours and everything, but it's still been a really long day, especially when you've been waiting for your game to start. Yeah, just having to be on, be prepped for the game, yeah. that definitely wears you out in a way. Yeah, you uh, have it, to be in the right up. state of mind as well. You have to be in the mm -hmm. right frame of mind, and being like that for hours on end takes a yeah. toll on them. The, the delays today, certainly, have affected everyone, so... Though of it course. is fair, though everyone is affected equally, I do want to be a little <laughs> True. gratuitous here. Oh, what's this? To play in the middle of the map again, this time from Saigon. And this time it will be a kill off of the Destiny Gate as Goni arrives in the river and back over. So both supports have now died once. Mm -hmm. The gold is dead even of three minutes. Dead even indeed. Both junglers though. Up here at the top <gasps> sign, Golden Feet will step no. forward and my lord, Trum just dances away. He messed up, Golden Feet. I think he could have read that one a little bit better as a veteran as well. We nearly see a solo kill in the middle lane. Belby, if he brought Ignite instead of Ghost, that could have been a solo bolo, but opting for the team fight to summon it instead, completely understandable. And as a result, our, our deadlock continues here in this <laughs> elimination game. We are just 25 seconds away from the first objectives arriving. And there's a bit of a roam coming up the map. I believe AOHK was spotted out. So we can resume our discussion. Indeed. And what was our discussion about against uh, TJ? I, I kind of lost track of things. I think if we look across the board, both of these teams, they're just chilling. They're farming. We're looking at the objective spawn coming up soon. Uh, what I do want to point out, though, what the Jess on this Trash against the Leona matchup. You know what? I think that's a fun talking point. It's going to be a bit before we see some action. Trash Leona is a very classic matchup. Leona tries to come in. You got to flay him away. We haven't seen much of that in the laning phase, but hopefully he gets the mechanics down pat here. Nice hook. Very good hook to open things up, but Blank One is able to hop away. And here's the play immediately behind it. AOHK flashing into the front lines, getting away. Zenith played in flash away, rather. The combination will work. Nobody oh dies in this fight. Drake has begun here by Invade. They do have very low HP bars, though. This is dangerous. Yeah, Cat Type is just going to try to spam his spells. Oh no, what's this? Hook lands. Oh, and they get a free kill on the gunner. AOHK got as well. Oh, it's three to Invade. Trum was trying to find a flank, but the fight is already over and done with. This Drake is gone. Well, I'm at a good idea right there. Great that you point that one out, TJ. He was trying to look for an angle. He's trying to get onto the back line, but it won't work if your teammate just walks into a trash hook. And that is honestly just mistake after mistake from Saigon Phantom. And they're deservedly getting punished right now. This Akshan Marksman is not going to be scaling better than a Kaiser. They need to be finding the skirmishes and they need to get it going. That Void Seeker that just interrupted his recall yeah. was completely <laughs> blind. It was completely what, blind. was it? Yeah, he had no ward. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to see it. That's the best thing you could possibly do. And now, if they want more, they want both the objectives. And, and get this, because the recall was interrupted, Trump has to walk the wrong way, long way around. Oh, he steals it! Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, if you steal it in that way, if you walk in and you get the repel like that, I think you completely deserve it as a well-earned one for Blake there. He just walks up and smites it. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a swag oh, walk oh, and. Target to ult. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we talked about it, right? It's a long day. We're delirious. It seems like the players are too, and who can blame them? <laughs> God, We're having fun up here. The players are having fun up here. <laughs> And Kaze eats like 10 damage, so sure, okay. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't even bother to walk behind the creeps. He doesn't bother letting them Why block it. He... He's like, I'm good. Gunner's going to shove down bottom here, so this turret is under serious risk, but Belvi's here in time. He's got clear. Invade, still deadlocked in terms of gold yes. at the end of all that. You do have the Rift Herald in the pocket of Saigon, so technically they have a presumptive gold lead, assuming that will find a torrent, find some value on the map. 
the Rip Herald in his pocket right now while they're playing from behind is the Schrodinger's gold lead. Don't get baited by a TJ. It might uh -huh. never materialize into anything. Simultaneously, a gold lead that exists and doesn't <laughs> exist. Exactly, and we're not going to know until he decides to pop it. Given the game state right now with invading control, I'm uh, leaning towards believing that it will not materialize into a gold lead. But they're going to trade mid, though. They're going to trade mid for this. Trump? What an escape! No, no, no. He's over the wall again! <laughs> that was incredible! He just baits Kaze, plays him beautifully! No, TJ, don't Got encourage him. That was in the time. <laughs> Easy kill, turn and mid destroyed. Kaze played like a banjo. Indeed, he was. Blick once more, though. He's not giving up on this blue buff. All right. He gets Blue it for buff free. doesn't give up on him. That's what you love to see in a relationship. <laughs> Indeed. And TJ, I have a very important question for you. I was going to get into it before I was so rudely interrupted by these teams deciding to take team fights. What does Akshan use? What is his weapon? I know he trolls uh, a it's, it's a little, it's a crossbar. It's a crossbow. Okay. I was just going to make a joke about how Ghana was an appropriate name and everything, but that's all gone now. That's fine. It's, well, I mean, did you know that Gunner actually uh, used to refer to archers? No way, I actually didn't. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh well, learning something new. Hope the viewers at home appreciate that little tidbit of information like I did. That was very cool. So, thank you. Well, I love well, I'm, I'm being serious. I wasn't being sarcastic. How's that roaming down? Spooky ghost. AOHK in trouble here. <gasps> Will be flash hooked, cleanses, and walks away. No trouble in the world. And <laughs> not a care in the world at all. Does he have Quicksilver Sash? Was that what it he was? Because he, he must, right? Because he that hook. No way he has that much tenacity. I, I think. Maybe he well, just has that much tenacity. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, right? But at this point, we see a 1v1 right now. You know, separate on the map. This should be, should have been Blake finding the kill onto Belby. He drops him very low, but doesn't complete it. Regardless, that means Invader at a 4v5 disadvantage. And so Saigon can take their lead up towards this Drake and Infernal, and they're burning it. Already down to half. Here's the oh, play. Nice. Oh, Gas will split the fight. AOHK drops the Solar Flare on the Drake itself. It is secure by Saigon, but they are losing the battle immediately afterwards. Goni is dead. AOHK has already fallen. Two kills in exchange for an Infernal. Ooh, and Gunner getting away with a sliver of health. <laughs> he wants more. <laughs> well, oh, it okay. was for Wave Clear. He kills the minion with that. No, it wasn't, TJ. That's that's reading he too much. The minion with that. <laughs> game fly. Gunner it was a bit of a game here. <laughs> a little bit sketchy, but yeah, he'll back away. I think he was positioning that to kill the minion. <laughs> It could have been very easily avoided by Invade just sidestepping away from the minion wave. But uh, we'll take that. We'll take uh, we'll take what happened at face value. I think it's fine. Blake, though, he pops the ultimate. He wants to be a bit sneaky. Katai knows nuts. exactly where he is. What's the meaning of that? Katai I, saw him go into that bush. Yeah, I, I'm lost for words. I have nothing left to say, TJ. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. I'm good. Cat type watched him walk into that bush. And what's more, Blake one watched Cat type watch him go into that bush. So and he decided, know. I'm gonna out. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows at this point? I'm well, just uh, gonna see some wave clear. I'm just gonna, uh, just gonna be shoving out some waves. Goni on this TF as well, getting some farm for himself. I do want to take a look at the items, though. I think that's important to keep track of. Invade Esports, when Belby played TF, he played very selfishly for the first 10 minutes. Got the Roa, Lich Bane, Rapid Fire Cannon by 13 minutes. And it seems like uh, Goni here, even though he hasn't been having the best game, he's been doing the most in his team. And he has the biggest gold lead. And he's close to that three item power spike mark as well. Uh, and, and one of the things we need to keep an eye on here is Gunner as well. Yeah, um, I, I actually think I skew the leg game towards Saigon Phantoms because they have Gunner. And Crit Akshan is pretty terrifying. The biggest opponent to that will be the Kaiser and the the uh, Brand in the middle of the map. Oh, nice hook. 
Very nice hook. Blake one tries to dance away, does the AOG nearby. Blake will just turn around. Oh my no god. Way. Yeah, he took the hook and he decides to flash after. He wasn't content with just getting Blake's flash. He had to flash himself and that greediness got him punished. His teammates, you saw them abandon what the Jets right there. He, they didn't want to take the lantern. They don't want to fly into Leona and Kha'Zix as we're going into mid turn. AOHK should back away. Colton Feet stepping up for this chase. So much damage. Kha'Zix thinking about this as well, kind of poking away at AOHK. Um, so I want to I want to touch on something just for anyone who's newer to the game. You may yeah. see as people walk close to Blake One, they have this purple circle around them. <laughs> uh, that purple circle yeah. means that you're isolated. You don't Indeed. have any of your allies nearby, and if you don't have any of your allies within that purple circle, then the Kazix does bonus damage to you of a truly incredible amount. So what went wrong there for what the Jess is? He left all his teammates with the flash, and Blake One just went, "Oh, hang on." I get my isolation bonus, yep. I get my bonus damage, and turned around to combo him. Exactly, and it's actually a bit of a fun fact. There are people. Oh, I have to hold that thought, though. You do. Because uh, I always no, I going don't. In. Now it's you can over. release That's that it. thought, you can <laughs> drop it right onto us. Gonna drop some truth bombs on everyone watching. Well, a lot of people point. actually do say that this Kha'Zix skin. Nope, I can't. We're just fighting. <laughs> like one's fighting for his life. He's burned. But happen there? He does ignite. eventually get burned to yeah. death. <laughs> uh, would be the ignite from cat type and he wants more. He wants to drag it. Invade this esports. This would be the drag of the game, a clown drag, so Saigon don't especially need to contest him. Yes um, sir. I and leave, it's just a clown drag, there's no need to fight for it 4v5. And Goni is going to get time. Yeah. Goni going to get it, I think he is. Belby might try to stop him though. Belby will be able to stop him. Drake goes over. It would have been so perfect if then Akali Shuriken had stolen the dragon. Alas, it does not happen. And yes, while we shouldn't have any action, I will try my best to finish up the point of why this Kha'Zix skin is actually in theory, and some people say it's the most broken Kha'Zix skin. Because by right, this skin has the most easily, uh, easily seen, I guess, or the most visible isolation animation. It's a big purple circle that has very clear angular edges. And that's how you know that this skin, you know, it's a bit paid to win, you could say, but it really clearly tells you when they're isolated and when you're gonna pop them like a balloon. So we'd like to thank Black One for making it a little easier for those yes, at home sir. to follow along with while he's doing so much damage. For himself as well, but I want to point out his items. It's a bit interesting. He's gone for a bit of a more utility build with some defensive components as well. He has the healing reduction. Uh, I don't think it's super necessary to rush that here. I think he probably just wanted the stats from the item, but he also has the more of Melmortius. That's something which I don't really like, right? I feel like when you're playing Kha'Zix, you can't really been, be throwing gold into items which don't give you damage. You just want a one shot. And uh, I think it's a little bit odd as well. Oh. Okay, he's gonna get out. That's fine. But it's a little bit odd because there's no real AP damage sources that will be aiming at him. Katar will be trying to go for the back line. Belby will be trying to go for the front line. Blake just needs to dance around the edges and no one should be looking for him. Nice dodge! Yeah, Blake. Wow, doing an incredible job staying ahead of this fight. Now he's got his friends. Anyway, his case getting focused again. He'll go down. Trum working the side of the fight as Colton Feet dives the front lines. Colton Feet will go down to Gunner. Trum caught out, is able to survive. Killer Instinct no. is Trum Jurikens away. And maybe Goni can turn this. It's going to be close. AOHK arrives off the respawn in the meantime. A kill What's will this? be passed over to Black One. Make it two, make it three. In the middle of the action, Goni's got the final card. And Saigon Phantoms wipe a fight in the middle of the map. A complete ace. And up against Elimination, they're going to convert this Baron. And this looks real good as they take the gold lead, a firm gold lead, for the first time this series. And TJ, that gold lead is going to grow as well after they pick up this Baron and after they use it to its maximum potential. Look at the team composition from Saigon Phantoms. That's a team comp that's capable of playing in all three lanes. Now, what does that really mean? What does it mean when you play in three lanes? We'll have to wait to answer that question as we look at the team fight where it starts off with AOHK getting caught. And honestly, if you think about it, that's the best person you could have getting caught. And this is why we say Akali is so good when there are no counters against her. The only thing that can fight her in Shroud 
is that belly bump, and it buys so much time, the genius, the shroud, and you know, he kind of hits it a little bit at the end, that flying into the brand face first, but he wastes so much time, he holds up four members of Invade by himself, lets his team clean up, gets the resets on Gunner as well as on Blake, and they just take over the fight. You're kidding me! What is They're this? finding this! That's oh. so sucked up! <laughs> That's so sucked up! Cat type just melts! He was on the yeah. wards, the play was planned, and it's beautifully planned. And this is gonna be it, I think. I feel like this might just be the game here. No cat type means no frontline means the assassins are jumping on you. And all of Invade were trying to set a vision around the Elder, and yeah. they were here to defend the base. Yeah, and, and the true inhibitor swords have now fallen, and that Elder that they were trying to set a vision, trying to set up a trap around, is completely free for Sargon Phantoms, just 15 seconds away. Yeah, it means nothing now. That vision does nothing. They want Blake 1, though, but he wastes the flame. You need to hold that one to cancel the Cossacks jump. What the Jazz? I feel like you would know this by now, but still makes a mistake. I understand. Tensions are high. It's a very high-pressure situation. Uh, let's take a look at how the game is gonna play out right now. I think they can just siege into the drag, uh, into the bottom lane turret. You got super minions pouring in every lane. Here's the play for the game. Psycon Phantoms trying to extend this series. Empowered waves crashing all three lanes simultaneously. A good bit of macro here to engineer that. And in they dive the fight. Killer Instinct into the back. Kaze chasing the kill. In the meantime, though, They're going for them. Tony off the Nexus. He doesn't care. He's sending us to game four. Saigon Phantoms extend the series.